This video is about the misuse or abuse of p-values, similar to the XKCD jelly beans comic. So the setup here is similar to um, the jelly bean comic and inspired by it. So first what I'm going to do is generate some uh, random data and then explain what it represents. We can imagine YA here uh, represents an individual's skin quality on a scale from 1 to 10 using integers uh, when they come in for the experiment. So they just show up and this is how they are to begin with. So here there's five different individuals. Here's their ratings. And then uh, they go uh, consume some jelly beans of a particular color for a week and they come back a week later and then YB over here is their skin quality or condition a week later where higher numbers are better so 9 here is very good the 1 is not very good you can see individual 1 they started out uh, excellent but then a week later um, they were worse. Individual two started out poor and maintained the same uh, skin condition. And if you look up at the code that actually generated the data, you can see that YA and YB are random variables with identical population distributions. Uh, in particular, they're sampled from the values 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, each with 10% probability um, and sampled with replacement. So we can get you know, 9 twice in the same sample. Um, and this 5 here is just how many individuals there are in the sample. You can see the code to generate YB is completely identical to the code to generate YA. So they both have a population mean of 5.5, so the population mean difference is zero. And so what the experimenters do is they take this after minus before difference for each individual. So then they have five numbers and they compute the sample mean of those five numbers and then test where the null hypothesis that the population mean is zero. So here, the first one, the change is minus four, then zero, then min uh, sorry, then positive three, then minus four, then minus one. And in R, we can just use this t test function, passing in our after minus before difference. And it'll tell us lots and lots of information, even give us a confidence interval. Um, but, and it'll explicitly tell us our uh, alternative hypothesis, but we'll focus here on the p-value, which is 0.4, so not even close to any, you know, not even close to 10% statistical significance level, let alone 5% or 1%. Um, and if we just want to look at that p-value for simplicity, we can use this other line of code where we just extract the p-value. So we can look at that. So we'll do that from now on. So this is like the first time they run the experiment with the all jelly beans. They say, ah, it's not significant. Maybe it's just a particular color of jelly bean. So they go and they recruit five other individuals and have them come in. And they again measure their skin uh, condition when they arrive. And then a week later, after they eat, let's say, pink jelly beans, they measure it. So again, some people get better, some get worse. Um, on average, there's not a big difference. And so when they do the uh, compute the p-value for the hypothesis test, it's again 0.34 not statistically significant at a 5% level. 
Then they try it a third time with blue jelly beans, get another data set, another p-value, not significant, and try it fourth time, fifth time, sixth time, seventh time. And eventually they try it an eighth time with the green jelly beans. And this is sort of like you know, gambling, playing a slot machine, even though each individual time the odds are against you winning. If you just keep playing and playing over and over again, eventually you will win. So with this green jelly bean, it happens to be that uh, everybody gets worse. Of course, it's not related to the green jelly bean because uh, that's not how the data are generated happens to be that these five individuals happen to have their skin get worse over the course of the week for other reasons. Um, but when we compute the p-value, now we do get something below 0 0.05. Again, the jelly bean does not have any effect in this example by construction. It's just that we are bound to get the p-value below 0 0.05, 5% of the time when the null hypothesis is actually true, like it is here. Um, so here's this green jelly bean result where we are incorrectly rejecting the null hypothesis of zero effect.